I think I'm privileged to share with you the life of a lady who ended up being called Mother Teresa of Africa. This is a life that reflects what Christ shared with us in James chapter 1 verse 27 about pure religion. As Christians, we need to understand what pure religion is. And as children, especially, we need to grow up to understand what pure religion is. The Bible talks about pure religion in First James, like I said, verse 27. Listen, pure religion, it says, that is undefiled before God, I'm paraphrasing now, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in the affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Three things, visit the fatherless, and the widows, and live an unspotted life. As a child, as a young person, as an adult, that should be our focus. And I want to talk about a lady that when I stand by her grave, because I was privileged to know her, I feel Jesus is alive in her life. She started as an orphan. An orphan nobody wanted. Born in Trinidad, one of those islands in the Caribbean. Tossed from one auntie to the other. And some of these aunties could have been Christians but they had no time for Yvonne. Yvonne Yurik had lost her father and her mother by the time she was five. And nobody had time for her. She had to roam the island, go to the beach and find something to eat. They sent her on errands, exploited her, but nobody cared for her. I would say nobody even loved her. So Yvonne was living out of chance. But you know what? There is a God in heaven. A God who sees orphans. If we don't see orphans, he sees orphans. He sees the widows. He sees the sparrow even. He knows all the birds on this earth, not to talk about human beings. So God saw Yvonne. God prepared a life for Yvonne. That's why a tourist Christian, a Christian tourist went to the Trinidad and found this young girl roaming the beaches and decided to think of her and talk to her and discovered she had no parents. He went back to England but he had no peace. He was thinking of Yvonne. He went back and did all he could to fulfill what James 1, 27 talks about, caring for the vulnerable, loving the children. You remember Jesus Christ telling his disciples, don't take those children, those children away from me, for this is the kingdom of heaven. And he sat to them on his laps and he blessed them. This man, knew 
that Jesus loves children. Jesus cares for children. Children, Jesus cares for you. He loves you. So he came back and adopted her and took her back to England. He had a daughter. So Yvonne had a sister now. And they grew together. And God cared for Yvonne. And this brother and the wife cared for Yvonne. And Yvonne grew. He, she grew and chose the right profession by the help of her father in heaven an adopted father on earth. You know what profession she chose? She became a nurse. And at some point in her life, she grew to be the matron of a hospital. And she could have said, I'm having a good life. But she wanted to give back to God and to those that need her. So she sat with her adopted father and said, Father, I want to give back to God by serving other people, other orphans, other widows, other vulnerable people, other needy people. And here she was after some time on her way to where? To Africa. She became a missionary in Ghana and she walked tirelessly to live a life of giving, a life of loving, a life of caring. From there, she was posted to Nigeria. She was posted to Jingui. And I was privileged in 1981 to be posted to Jingri along with her. She received us as the matron of Jingri Seventh-day Adventist Hospital. She walked tirelessly. A story that I love to share about her to add to the soul of person. In 1972, the government took over the hospital in Jingri and they told all the missionaries to go home. The government felt we don't need missionaries again. We don't we can run the hospitals ourselves. So the government took over all the hospitals of the Adventists, of the Baptists, of the Methodists, of the Catholics. And they told us to Uric. The church told us to Uric. There's no more hospital. You have to go back to England. Sister Uric asked God. Is it time for me to go back? And she got the answer. God says, I still need you in Nigeria to walk with the Muslims a little bit more. You know what she did? Sister Yuri took half salary and went to buy drugs and drove out of the hospital to the next village and opened up a clinic. Sister Yurik opened up more than 15 clinics around the northern part of Nigeria. And when we came, we had what we call the Rural Health Program of North Nigerian. And she took care of all the Muslim women, all the Muslim children from the hospital to a distance of over 300 kilometers, Sister Yurik will go. One day, one fateful day, Sister Yurik went to Dhaka, a village about 50 kilometers from Jingri. On her way back, her jeep somersaulted. She had an accident. And Sister Yurik was flung out of the car and she died. Sister Yurik gave her life helping people. And because she had no family as such, she wrote in a will, if I happen to die in Africa, bury me in Africa and give everything I have 
to train other people. And that's what was done. But the day Sister Eunice was buried will always remain in my memory. The Fulanis came. The Al-Hajis came. That's are Muslims who have been to Mecca. The women came. The children came. There were thousands of people in the village pouring in from all over the place. You know what the Fulanis were saying? Especially the Muslims. The expression was love has died. Patience has died. Kindness has died. I was just listening and I said to myself, this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Sister Yurik was filled with the Holy Spirit. She lived her life for others to be happy. We discovered later on that Sister Yurik had sponsored more than 50 children through school, through universities. A lot of the people I know today who are pastors were trained by Sister Yurik in the 80s and often that somebody cared for, that somebody loved because that person represented the eyes of Jesus, the heart of Jesus and the love of Jesus. Do you want to have pure religion in your life? Take care of orphans. Do what Jesus did. Taking care of children. Taking care of young people. Taking care of elderly people. Taking care of the widows. Taking care of the vulnerable. Taking care of God's own property. The whole world is God's. And he wants you and I to take care of those who need us. Do you want to have a relationship that is pure with Jesus? Then do what he asks you. And he will forever be grateful for you obeying him. Because he himself left heaven. We were orphaned on this planet. But he left heaven and took the form of man and died on the cross to save you and I. What will it take for me and you to help others than just, yes, Lord? What did it take, Sister Yurik? It's just, yes, Lord. What did it take, the gentle Christian man who trained Sister Yurik? Yes, Lord. Do you want to say yes, Lord? Now? I pray you do that. Now. Amen.